Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Set the example, do what you ought to do what you ought to. Some days I feel like I don't do enough. I'm working hard, but that don't always equal up to love. If you know, if you know, then you know. If you don't, then you won't understand what it means to be a family man. We had some struggles, but we made it through. Another million rice and beans, another cup of soup. If you know, if you know, if you don't, then you won't understand what it means to be a family Showing up, are we awake? Are we struggling, 
You ready for the day? Good morning, Jace. Good morning, Teresa. <laughs> I'm not sure what that word is, JC, but I think Jace is struggling. She can't spell yet. <sighs> nice, Jackie. In the early walk in. And we had some rain Saturday. Cool things off a little bit here. So it was nice. Knocked a lot of the dust out of the air because we had a lot of it. So it was nice. Made the evenings a little cooler too. Waiting on a hurricane. I, I was wondering if it was going to make it up that far. I'd, I have a sister that lives in Jacksonville, which I know that's pretty far up. Um, I have a brother that lives in North Miami, but I think I don't know where the hurricane is. I know they had some stuff the other day, but nothing, nothing bad. Morning, Mary. Okay. Cat one. I need to check on her. I didn't realize it was going that far north. Gross. Man, you check on my brother and my sister. <laughs> All right. We are on day 182. And we are reading Obadiah. We have finished Kings. First and second Kings. Obadiah chapter 1 today. And then Psalms 82 and 83 today. So. Um, let me find that here. Schools are close today, tomorrow, and Thursday. We will get the. What'd you say? Talking to me, babe. Dirty side with most potential for tornadoes. But we are all. Ready to go, huh? <laughs> I, I guess I didn't realize. That you guys got tornadoes over there like that. I know you had the hurricanes. I just didn't. Teresa talking about Florida with the. I knew they had the hurricanes coming. I guess I didn't realize. Huh. All right. Let's pray. We'll get started. She's coming. She's getting here. Miss America is on her way. It's amazing. She's coming through the maze. All the stuff. Good morning, ladies. Got the chatty over here already. Because Teresa. Mm, rain, hurricane, holy moly, uh, so sorry, schools are closed tomorrow, 
and Thursday, who will get the dirty side with the most potential. Right out. Hmm. Yes, Lord, let it move quickly. God, we pray that you would just keep Teresa and everyone in the area safe, Lord Jesus. Mm. Lord Tammy. Bless, 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 bless. Safety, Father, safety, Father. Jackie, the grounding, holy word. At least with, at least with the holiday, people can prepare and leave. And if they want, if they want, and hope it breaks up and weakens. Yes, good. Weaken the destructive things, Father God. That's so good. Mm, good morning, ladies. I'm not, it's been hard to get up lately. My sleep has been off. I am praying for life work balance today. Today. For this home to be in order by the time we go to bed tonight. Order. To not be worn out from it. Plus a lot of great work to get done. Productivity. Praying for connection with you, healing in this body, energy, wisdom, strategy, strength, unity, Jesus, and healing, healing, healing for our sisters that are on here. Healing, Father God, healing, 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 which makes me think of you, Mary. Have you made a decision or not? Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, JC Bear. Wakey, wakey. Can you imagine waiting on a hurricane? Gosh. Mm -hmm. Waiting on a tornado, so you can see the hurricane coming. For sure. Did you find out about our internet? No. I didn't know what they uh, try to figure it out. I was gone all day. Loading. Trying to find a sink. But uh, so I I'm so sorry. Sorry. I said polo and said sorry. Um, Ready to start? There's been a, several shootings, you guys, the last couple of days. She's awake. Um, gosh. We need to pray for our cities and our communities and our nation every day. Truly. Okay, I'm excited to see it. I'm see it, um, hear it, see it, and hear it. Uh, all right, you ready? Mm -hmm. You awake? Mm -hmm. I'm irritated that there's not an answer about the internet. <laughs> it's like important every single day. It's not a number, so uh -huh. there's no number, so you just have to email. Really? Yeah. Did you email? The other day I did. I haven't heard anything. Oh. <clears throat> okay. They just need to do what they say they're going to do. Like the time of it. That was supposed to be here was process. a week. Uh, it's excellent. <laughs> I absolutely where I'm going to process it right now because they deserve to not hear it. No, I guarantee you they're wondering if they're not. 
is ever going to be something dependable. All right. Uh, That's pretty. Let me know where I can process things. Where did you just look? <laughs> I'll just sit on the couch. Mm -hmm. I will. Sit on the couch. I'm just sit on the couch. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to read your word again. Uh, thank you for all the ladies that are here mm -hmm. to hear your word, to study your word, and grow in your word. Father, I pray for all of our peeps in Florida. That you protect yes. them, keep them safe. Um, protect Jackie and her family, her friends, my brother, my sister. Just keep people safe. Yeah. Um, Lord, speak to us today. Um, may we um, take your word and meditate on it, hear from you, and grow in it. Help us to be better because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we're going to read the big book of Obadiah today. Which means it only has one chapter. All right, Obadiah 1. 1, and there is no 2. Edom will be humbled. One and only. Thus says the Lord, God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger <coughs> has been sent among the nations. Rise up, let us rise against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You have you you who live in the cleft of the rock. In your lofty dwelling, you say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like eagle. Though you, your nest is set among the stars. For there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. Woo. That's not a statement I would want written after me, especially in the Bible. <clears throat> Edom. I would think it would be a people. We'll find a group, a people group. Yeah. If these come, if thieves came to you in plunder, if plunders came by night, how you have been destroyed. Let me read that again. If these came to you, if plunders came by night, how you have been destroyed. Would they not steal only enough for themselves? If great gathers came to you, would they not leave? gleanings how Esau has been pillaged his treasures sought out all your allies have driven you to your to your border those at peace with you have deceived you they have prevailed against you those who eat your bread have set a trap beneath you you have no understanding well I not on that day declares the Lord Destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of Mount Esau. And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O Teman, so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. Why? It has its, uh, it's talked about because of its pride and arrogance, basically. What is the Edom? Okay, sorry. Did we already read about that? No. Edom is violence against Jacob. Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates. What tomorrow are you doing this? Is what you just did. You stopping and looking? That's you. I was letting you just get it over with. I am going to get it over with. You don't let me. <laughs> And cast lots for Jerusalem. <clears throat> you were like one of them. But do not gloat over the day of your brother in the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. Do not boast in the days of distress. Do not enter the gate of my people. 
In the day of their calamity, do not gloat over his disaster. In the day of his calamity, do not loot his wealth. In the day of his calamity, do not stand at the crossroads to cut off his fugitives. Do not hand over his survivors in the day of distress. The day of the Lord is near. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For you, for as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations shall drink continually. They shall drink and swallow and shall be as though they have never been. But in Mount Zion there shall be those who escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. And they shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survivor. For the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. The kingdom of the Lord. Those of the Negev shall possess Mount Esau, and those of Shephelah Shef, 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 shall possess the land of the Philistines. They shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles of the host of the people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. And the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Shepharad Sep shall possess the city Cities of Negev. Survivors shall go to the mount, go up to Mount Zion to rule over Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. This is just so like out of left field for me. Just all of a sudden, this prophet. I'm assuming that I was like a He's a prophet, but he has this vision. So, man, I love a recap now. <coughs> Psalms eighty two. That's it. That was it. That's the whole chapter. We're done. I'm glad I'm done. All right. Rescue the weak and needy. Lord, give us wisdom. A Psalm of Asaph. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you hold judge will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are God's son of the most high, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, and you shall inherit the nations. O God, do not keep silence, a psalm of Asaph. O God, do not keep silent, do not hold your peace, or be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make, a, make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspire with one accord. Against you they make a covenant. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Gabal, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek. Philista, Philista, with the inhabitants of Tyre, the Sura, Sura <coughs> has also joined them. 
they are strong arm of the children of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, Midian and to Caesarea and Jamin at the river Kishon, who were destroyed at Endor, who became dung of the, for the ground, met their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zebah and Z Zalmunna, who said, let us take possession for ourselves of the pastors of God. Oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like cha chafe before the wind, as fire consumes the forest, as the flames sets the mountains ablaze. So may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. Hmm. For their faces will shake with shame, fill their faces with shame, that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace. Let that they may <coughs> okay, babe. That they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all earth. <coughs> Some similar to what you, the prayer you said, Teresa, that they may know to open their eyes and see the only thing that is supreme is God. All right. Ooh, goodness. Y'all, we were about halfway through the year of reading the Bible today. <laughs> it's exactly, I don't know what it is. What is it? Divided by two. So new. Yep. Today is it. <clears throat> halfway through. Technically, halfway through tomorrow, we'll be halfway through. <laughs> uh. That's amazing. Lord, let the second half be even better than the first half. What do you think about that? We did that, you guys. The remnant is here, standing strong. There's these little gnats that uh, lived here before us, and they're not moving out. <laughs> That's pretty funny. They're here by the bajillions. The, baj the bajillions is accurate. There's a lot of them. Now, the other day when we had the storm come in, we had the wind. They are not around. It was awesome. So we need fans up. Yeah, fans. Like spray massive fans. I'll go spray. Definitely. Well, the guy, the pest control guy came out. He said, I can spray. He goes, give them a couple days. They'll be back. He goes, I can spray. He goes, you're not getting rid of them out here. The gnats? Mm -hmm. So just what the man said. All things are possible. <laughs> Hmm. I mean, I just need them out of my house. Yeah. I don't care where else they are. There's just, mm, we need to, we need to help them. We are really halfway through, guys. And I. And then there's your daughter, our daughter, that would say this. It's not enough for her. <clears throat> well, JC is living her best life. <laughs> um, so funny. Um, 
What do you think about being halfway through this? It's I mean, awesome. I've never done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. It's been good. I, I mean, honestly, like when we first started and we we're like, we're going to do it for the whole year. I was like, how in the world with our life and as busy we are? And that was before all this was taking place. Are we going to do this every day? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way it's going to happen. <clears throat> but we've done it. So. What do you think would get in the way? I mean, just travel and being in different places and, you know, we're on the move and I don't know. Yeah, good job, babe. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's really been cool. It's, it's been, amazing. I've learned a lot. And I'm grateful for you guys here. It's really awesome. Um, gross, Stacy. It's kind of cool. God is good and you've honored him through it all. Thank you, Jackie. It's helped change my heart to be better. Most definitely. I, I feel changed. And I 1,000% see God differently. Truly. And what a gift. What a gift to do this with you guys. What a gift to do this with you. But what a gift to do this at all. I'm really grateful. Really grateful for this. What a calling for her, Terry Cobble, for this to be someone to take on. To break it up, to make it chronological, break it up, and then recap every single day. I wonder how long that took, or if they had a team that just like tackled it. Yeah. I don't know. I was a team, but. All right. Let's get the recap. No one knows when Obadiah was written or what it's about or anything. Just kidding. No one knows when it was written. Estimates range from 850 BC, which is approximately where we are in the story, to 400 BC. If it's happening around 850 BC, it likely connects the two events we just read about. Egypt's invasion of Jerusalem in 2 Chronicles 12 and Edom's revolt against King Jehoram of Judah in 2 Chronicles 21. Today, enemies come to take over Jerusalem, the capital of southern Judah. And the prophet Obadiah rebukes the Edomites for it. Why? These are the descendants of Esau, the twin brother of Jacob, Israel, who is the father of the 12 tribes. Edom is Israel's and Judah's closest relative. But family drama has plagued them since Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for stew. On top of that, Jacob tricked Esau out of the only thing he had left he had left his father's blessing. They made amends years later, but there's a lingering tension between these two people groups, clearly. They also live next door to each other, which means the Edomites aren't just the closest relatives of the 12 tribes, but they're also the closest neighbors of Judah. When Jerusalem is in, in, invaded, Edom is expected to come to their aid. Instead, they not only don't help, but they add to the oppression the enemy nations inflict on Judah. Edom is too prideful to help Judah. He calls them out. On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates, and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. Verse 11. Their passivity is just as bad as if they personally wielded the sword against Jerusalem. And some people believe they did wield the sword against Jerusalem. 
because God tells Edom not to do, not to do, is that right? not to do eight specific things to do to Judah. Do not gloat over his disaster. Do not loot his wealth. Do not hand over his survivors. So it seems they're on the wrong track. Either way, Edom isn't the kind of neighbor or relative you want. Then Obadiah says something that has both immediate application and long-term implications. The day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. That phrase, the day of the Lord, encompasses both a general idea of a day when God will work out justice in a particular scenario, as well as an ultimate final day when God will do that. In the Old Testament, it typically refers to the more immediate scenario. And in the New Testament, it... My bad. It typically refers to the final scenario. What? In the Old Testament... Oh, I got confused because it's the same... Never mind. I'm sorry. In the Old Testament, it typically refers to the more immediate scenario. And in the New Testament... It typically refers to the final scenario, the day when Jesus will bring justice and free the world of corruption and evil through both judgment and restoration. In the short term scenario, God says justice will unfold like this. The land and people of Edom will be devoured by the land and the people of Israel. Psalm 82 was likely written much earlier, but it fits well here. It's about God's call to help the needy and oppressed, much like God called Edom to come to Judah's aid. However, there's evidence through this song that Asaph is talking to God's divine enemies here, not humans. In verses six through seven, either Asaph or God himself seems to condemn them for the way they've acted wickedly. You are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. What do we make of this psalm? If we zoom out, we see that God values justice, and he values showing mercy and kindness to those in need. And he'll execute judgment even on the divine beings who fall short of that standard. Today's God shot. And what is yours on this almost completely halfway through? Psalm 83 is a cry for God to work justice on those who have opposed his people. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. Against you, they make a covenant. God identifies so closely with his people, and when they're mistreated, he takes it personally. God clearly isn't going to sit back and let Judah get bullied without doing something about it. His vengeance isn't like human revenge. It's perfect. And it's just. He's so protective of his people that he works out justice, not just in the human realm, but also in the supernatural realm. He's so powerful and protective, and he's <clears throat> where the, where joy, the is. joy is. <clears throat> what? Nothing. Um. Yes, my God shot would be that just the fact that we as Christians like just are able to to have the confidence and the the faith, the strength, the just that ability to just trust God knowing that he's going to protect his people. And I, I think 
you know, the Old Testament, it was the Israelites. And as things shift to the New Testament, it's those that are believers. And so I think that no matter what's going on in the world, and it's not always easy, but at the end of the day, God's going to protect his people. And he's going to come for his people. Um, and so that our, I think, responsibility maybe is the right word. Mm-hmm. Um is to just love him well, to love others well, and then to trust God that he's got the rest. Right? Like, he just, he's going to protect his people and he's coming for us. So, and whether we see that in our lifetime or not, <clears throat> the fact is, that's what his promise, that's what his word says. So, um, it's just sometimes hard to, Remember that because it can get very difficult and we look at the world we live in today and it's pretty jacked up. And so it's like, are you out there sometimes? And yet, obviously we all know he is, but it's just being able to sit back and, and have the confidence to know that God's, he's got us and he's, he's going to, he loves us well and he's going to take care of us. I love that. And he does. He does a good job of taking good care of it. Love people taking care of us. Love people well and trust him because he will take care of the rest. A lady said this weekend at the um, event, we were um, at Powerhouse Women. She said, get out of God's business. Just let him take care of his business and take care of yours. And obviously my business is God's business, but basically, you know, she's saying just, um, no, not really more like quit trying to help where you're not needed. Quit trying to be busy about, being the solution and being the help, being the, you know, oftentimes we want to help others so bad that we like our, I have a thing that I read often that says your purpose is not um, about solving everybody's problems or helping everybody or something like that. And I think when we release that, Mm -hmm. When we, when we release that, we give him so much more room. Not that he needs our room like he's going to do what he's going to do. But we give ourselves so much room, more room to see what God can do and to, to just be just in his presence and, and watch him and feel and experience in our bones that we're not needed. Mm-hmm. That we're just literally not needed um and that's pretty that's pretty powerful um so yeah i wouldn't get interpret that i mean i don't know i wasn't there obviously you know you know what she was talking about but two ways one is we can get in the way sometimes of trying to rescue people and doing things for people when that's trying to, to walk somebody through something <clears throat> to teach them and i think sometimes when we're we want to step in and try to help do instead of let God do what he needs to do. And then also sometimes I think we try to play God, like, and all that can mean the same, I guess, but like. Be the solution. Be the solution or try to tell God what he needs to do (laughs) as if he needs our help. Um, Yeah. And step in to try to change people or change the situation when Instead of just let God do what God does. And because it's hard um, sometimes to watch somebody you know or care about go through something hard. And sometimes it's just about us just being there, praying for that person, but let God walk them through what they need to walk through. And that's not easy, um, especially if somebody you're really close to. Um, Because that season can be hard, but God's trying to teach them something. Just like he's, he's done all through Scripture. Whenever the children 
would turn their hearts from him. He would let them go through some really hard things mm -hmm. until they humbled themselves and cried back out. And then he's like, okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think it's hard for us to, to watch that happen. We want to go in and fix it. I'm, I'm a fixer. I'm that way. So, um, so yeah. You are. We all are to an extent. Um, and I think sometimes we don't realize how much we get our affirming through that. If you didn't do those things, would you still feel as proud of yourself? Would you still feel as worthy? Would you still feel? Because um, even in the, like, in those things, God does not, he just does not need us. And, um, yeah. I feel like um, the less we do sometimes for others, the more helpful we can be sometimes. <laughs> but see, one of the things she said was like, your kids are God's business. And I thought that was really good. And um, that's a perfect example of something that's literally within your realm of stewarding, your responsibility, your, oh. like you're assigned to them. And also they are his business. So just even the way we think about things, the way we steward things that it's not, it's not mine. How do you want this steward? How do you want this done? You know, and when you think about even your own children or even your husband, like this is God's son. He's first and foremost, my brother in Christ. And I love him better when I see him like that, when I see him as God's son and we love our children better when we see them too, as his children and it's a blessing. It's just a blessing that he get, he gives us the opportunity to steward those things. So, um, yeah. All right. Any other God shots or anything else you want to share? Mm. And what are you excited about today? <laughs> Listen, party people, we, we want to point that out because it stirs up hope. And the, the element of hope is so profound and in your life. It is, um, uh, indicative of your happiness and success, how much you have to look forward to. I feel like there's nothing we can't, everything we look for. We have so much, everything to look forward to. Um, and what gets no play today helps us to stop for a second and identify um, what exactly is a way that the enemy has been coming at us and using us to make, to cause, um, what do you call it? Cause trouble. Yeah. What is a way or something that um, he's holding back or a mindset that is, he just keeps using to get you, get you off center, get you out of your, you know, focus on what really matters and what, who can you, um, with whom and how can you share God's extraordinary love? It's how we can be like Jesus today. I, I'm i excited about um, how this living room is going to look at the end of this day and that you and I are meeting over lots of things today. That will be so incredible. Need strategy. Um, I think the office is getting painted today, maybe. Did y'all get the paint? They cleared out a lot of it. Not all of it, I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't know what all they got done. Um, what gets no play 
is going back to sleep. All you have to do is move your body a little bit and the physiology changes how you feel about everything. I need a big old tub to start doing ice baths. Could you do big, some? It's a big horse trough. Yeah. You yep. say that like it's funny. I'm totally serious. Oh, I didn't think you would be down. <laughs> That's what they do them in. Mm -hmm. You just fill it with water and ice. Would you do yes, that with me? I don't know. For one week. For one month. For two weeks. See how it changes so fast? I know. Let's see how she does. I mean, I don't know. I'm not fond of cold. I know. Like zero, I'm, I'm not fond of cold. I know. Except when I sleep. I like it cold in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Other than that? Um, ice bath station. Mm -hmm. Well, I want one of those at every in every area. All right. I'm excited about just getting stuff done today and planning with my wife. And look, it's no play is not planning with my wife. And extraordinary love. Goes to <clears throat> my wife and that trailer full of stuff I have out there. Oh I have a whole trailer attached to my truck. And it's full. I gotta get it unloaded. <clears throat> I'm so excited. The next load is gonna be bomb. It's gonna be the load that allows me to decorate. The next one, though. No. Well, I have one more at the other storage, and then those two. But <clears throat> we'll figure it out. I'm so excited. It's going to be long. So, yes. Looking forward to having a day of hardly any work meetings Yay. today. And no play, not getting enough water. And love, prayer to those around us in this group. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> so... We're so blessed by your presence, Jackie. I'm glad you're here. I hope that all of you guys are still here all the way through this year. And um, if there's anything that we can do to make it better, to, to I, I just need a little bit of life work balance so that I can show up better. I don't like to leave from tired energy. So I apologize for that lately. And, um, I crashed last night. You did so early. I fell asleep on the couch at eight. You didn't went, even tell the boys goodnight. Went to bed. I was out. Mm -hmm. the night before was rough. If you getting home late and all the stuff going on. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was so rough. God uh. willing, I'll be here. Yes, you will. Yes, Teresa. All right, we are out of here, guys. We love you so much. We love you so much. We genuinely just hold great honor and space. I'm not very good at making this. That's great. Pop your knuckles a little bit. See these little things right here? Go. Oh, that's a soften. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Class got canceled. I oh, wasn't ready. Uh, go get ready then. Go get ready. All right. We love you guys so much. We'll see you in the morning. One, two, three. He's, He's where the joy is. is. You guys have a great day. Be blessed. Bye. You guys love us and see us. We do. <laughs> okay, Teresa. Get it together, sister. Oh, she corrected. Uh -huh. Live with the word live. What's it meant to say love? I feel you. I know what you're trying to say. <laughs>